So I'm not, I don't believe in this magical shit with God. I'm saying that we have power and control to be masters of our own destiny. So when I identify the black woman as God, I am simply saying that she has the power to change her reality, just like men have the power as God to change their reality. If she is God, I'm God by default because I'm a son of God. Let's just be for real, but I don't believe in that religious rhetoric. Hey, you know what else the black woman got the power to do? Lock your dumb ass up. Yeah, she got the power to do that too. Man. It's crazy. The Most High made you a laughing stock. Not just in Israel, a laughing stock in the black conscious community, a laughing stock in the world. A laughing stock. You, man, you go to prison, you're going to be a laughing stock. You're going to be uh, washing somebody's drawers. Yo, look at the, <laughs> look at the time span. Like the, the, uh, <laughs> his face. At the time step, I'm paused at. This dude is going to be a... If that man, this dude is in for a very, very, very rough time. Seven years. Let me show you the meaning of the word God from which it derives so you can understand my approach. Because I have a militaristic approach towards identifying the black woman as God. It keeps me humble and it keeps me balanced. It keeps me in a state of knowing it keeps me in a state of having a perspective that empowers her and empowers me because I understand my position and my role in society. So let's look this up. We see right here, Marion Webster's Dictionary. I'm gonna go to meaning two. We see Christian science and all this other stuff here. Let's go to meaning two. It says a being or object. So God could even be an object. I'm just talking about the language that we're speaking in. God can be an object. So it says a being or object believed to have more than natural attributes and powers and to require human worship specifically one controlling a particular aspect or part of reality let's slow down bring it back to me bro bring it back to me we seen the meaning here so god is a being or object believed to have more than natural attributes and powers i think we're undermining the significance of the black woman's ability to procreate. You had to race amongst, amongst 777,777,777 sperm. The count may be lower because of the 50 cent sodas and the Kool-Aid brothers and sisters drinking. Granted, the count may be lower because of the fried rice and the chicken wings. Granted, the count might be lower because the chicken spot stays open to about five in the morning and they don't even get chicken deliveries. Granted, but you, being born, was nothing short of a miracle in the first place. Is the space inside the bottle separate from the space outside the bottle? And always remember, my brother, one fish, two fish, red fish, blue fish, knick-knack, party work, get a dog a bone, 2000, zero, zero, party, oops, out of time, my bacon smelling fine. Because I worship the black woman. Why should I worship the black woman? I worship the black woman because she has the ability to pick up where I leave off when it comes to making a child. Why do I worship the black woman? Why do I say she's God? So let me get this straight. You raped God. All right, go ahead. You know, it's, it's so many lessons within this. There's a lesson within a lesson within a lesson within a lesson. So many, so much stuff to learn from this. You can learn from the mistakes of, of idiot two thirds like this. You know, here it is. You calling the, the black woman your God. And then you rape, you rape your God and your God puts you in jail. Another thing I want to uh, say, too, is uh, bring up a video about how he was talking about the prison system and uh, how basically he got himself out of a jam. Let's listen to uh, what Polite had to say about about that. So when we say take matters into our own hands, what we're saying is <clears throat> stop funding your oppression. When you get an indictment, 
That's a bill of exchange. That's a form of commerce. You see, all laws are commercial. If you go to 27 CFR, okay, that's the Code of Federal Regulations. If you go to 27 CFR 27.11, okay, you'll find what? You'll find that if, oh, pardon me, 72.11. If you go to 27 CFR 72.11, you'll find that all crimes are commercial. You'll find that all crimes are commercial. And again, if you go to uh, the House Joint Resolution 192, March 9th, 1933, okay, 73rd Congress, Session 1, Chapter 1, page 73, page 83, you'll find what? First paragraph, third sentence, that they have no gold, they have no silver, and in turn, they had to pledge the labor of the people while giving them full disclosure in order to pay back their debt. So they have your name represented in all caps whenever they're dealing with you on a commercial standpoint or basis. And when they do stuff like that, they're confirming that you are dead. They're confirming that you're dead. That's why them brothers that got child support in New York, peep how not only do they put your name in all caps, which represents a trust created by the state in order for them to pay back their debt, they put your name backwards first. They put your last name first. Where else do you see that? You see that on the cemetery. They put your last name first because they're considering you and the mother dead. So what they'll do, they'll issue child support on you without even telling the mother or the father that they're having a hearing because they consider the mother dead. You understand? As the debt So we have to confirm that we are alive. We have to confirm that we live. Now people say, this paperwork, this beast ain't going to sit down to this paperwork. But that's a lie. Because if the beast didn't care about the paperwork, he wouldn't ask you to sign before you get convicted to go to prison. Before they can sell your prison labor as a mortgage-backed security, they have to get your permission because you can't do, you can't make an unconscionable decision. According to commerce, that's illegal. So before they can sell your bid bond, payment bond, and performance bond, and they consolidate it and create a mortgage-backed security, and this means what? Every time one of us get locked up and go to prison, we represent the payment for a failed mortgage. We represent the payment for a failed mortgage. Every time somebody, so there's a direct correlation between foreclosures and what? Pr imprisonment. Privatized prisons is a business that makes money over people's incarceration. We have to see, this is why it's so important to turn around and say, look, we gotta find a way to buy houses without a mortgage. Because a mortgage is set up to take advantage of subprimes, people that they know by analytics cannot pay the debt. They got you figured out before you even signed the contract. <coughs> they know that you cannot afford to pay for that mortgage inside of two to three years. So they say give it to them because they, they already got an underwriter right there waiting called the Corrections Corporation of America. The underwriter is the surety. The surety is like an insurance company that says any event this person doesn't pay, we'll pay back the money, but just give us a cut. Right. So what, the, what, this hap what happens is, you got the commercial bank, right? And then, aside from the commercial bank, you got what? Investment bank. So you got the commercial bank and you got the investment bank. And people go over here and say, look, I need a loan for a house in a form of a mortgage. So they say, I got you $200,000. Every five people is a million dollars, right? <coughs> Every five people is a million dollars. And what the commercial bank does, they wait until they get about a billion people and they create a bond that represents, a uh, part of me, they get a bond that represents one billion dollars in debt. That's what they do. They keep, and what they're doing is servicing the loans for the investment bank. So what they're doing, they're working off a commission. They're saying, yo, I'm going to get mad debt from the black community. This is what I'm going to do. And when I get it up to a billion dollars, or I get up to half a billion, I'm going to turn it over to you. But I want real money in exchange for these debts. So they give over a billion dollars. They say, yo, can you just give me back a quarter million for every billion? And the investment bank says, yeah. So the investment bank gives them real money because the commercial bank doesn't have the capital to wait 30 years for a fixed rate mortgage to potentially go through. You know what I'm saying? Because chances are, 30 years, it's not going to work out. Remember, mortgage is what? Mort means death. Engage means pledge or agreement. So that means you make an agreement until the day you die. That means your whole mind is not going to be preoccupied with spirituality. You're going to be working to keep that physical house. So people say, I'm teaching something adverse to spirituality. No, I'm not. I'm trying to get you out of that 30 year loop, out of that student loan for $10,000, out of that mortgage for $300,000, out of that credit card debt for $15,000. 
we have to teach the economics to get to our spirituality. Otherwise, you're going to be working two, three jobs, and you won't even have the esteem. You'll be fatigued. You'll fall down and do a rock eye, and you won't come back up. You'll be making us a lot, and you won't come back up because you'll be tired. So what happens is, they get this bond, they service the loans to the investment bank, and what the investment bank does, they create a corporation. And what they do, they break this corporation up into shares. And they sell bonds. But these bonds have to have sureties to indemnify them. How do you indemnify a bond through a surety? A surety is an insurance company for the most part. So investors say, I know you got credibility because you're an investment bank and you created this corporation, but can you confirm that in the event this money doesn't work out because something goes wrong, you're going to pay the money? And they say, yes, we can confirm. If something doesn't go right, you're always going to make your money 100% of the time. And they say, how do you do that? Well, we got another thing over here. This thing over here is who? The water. Corrections Corporation of America. The correctional facility is actually playing a role as a surety on your behalf because your prison number is really an account number. So what they're doing is saying, look, we're going to make you work and for free or for very little. And you might get, when you get up to $5, they might have made $5,000 off your labor. And that's why when you're sentenced, they get you to sign bonds. Which means what? You're being sued. Because a bond is a debt obligation. They get you to sign a bid bond, payment bond, and performance bond. They combine it, and the Corrections Corporation, after they give you a prison number, which is an account number, they are the surety for these investors. So the reason why these investors are willing to invest money from the investment bank that got their money from the commercial bank in the form of a bond is because the corrections facility says anytime somebody doesn't pay back their mortgage, which is out of the commercial bank's hands, the commercial bank's job is just to get suckers. And they turn it over to investment bank. Now, if the money doesn't work out, the investment bank hits up the surety, which is the Correction Corporation of America, and say, yo, um, give me all the people that's doing 10 and 15 right. years for murder. Yeah. Because it's like, like even when you look at Dr. York, right. for every count that he got, okay, there was a $5 million bond per count. You understand what I'm saying? So if he had over 100 counts, they're making that money every day until he dies in prison. Yeah. Okay, that's the presumption. That's what they do to everybody else. Now, you see, before you go to court, before you get convicted, they ask you something very important. Because people say, all this paperwork, nah, that's not real. The white man don't listen to that. Listen to me. Listen to this carefully. America is a corporation. You can see that Article 1, Section 8, Clause 17, amongst many other things. 1913 Federal Reserve Act, amongst many things. House Joint Resolution 192, March 9, 1933. 73rd Congress Session 1, Chapter 1, First Paragraph, Third Sentence, Page 83. Doesn't matter. Uh, many things confirm that America is in debt and America is a corporation. Point blank. Corporations have to follow laws, point blank. All you have to do is snitch on a corporation if they're doing the wrong thing to their superior. Corporations have laws. Secondly, if they didn't care about your signature or your sign of nature, why wouldn't, before you get convicted, they ask you something before you start signing? Is anybody forcing you to do this? Are you under any drugs or medication? You know why? Because you cannot make an unconscionable decision when it comes to securities. Before they can sell your contract, they have to know that you are willing to sign that contract. The biggest fault that we have, we be signing things that we don't understand. So they say, yo, uh, is anybody forcing you to do this? And you say no. And you start signing? Hell yeah, you're being forced. You want to go to prison? I'm being forced. Who? Who's forcing you? My attorney, my lawyer, my judge? I don't want disagreement. You got to tell the truth. You gotta, don't sign nothing. People say, but if I don't, you gotta know how to close or collapse the bond. Don't sign nothing. Now people say, well, you, you know, that sounds fly. I was locked up for murder, fam. So I'm not trying to teach people how to get away from murder. Let me put that on the record. You know what I'm saying? Because that's gonna be there. I'm not trying to get you a, a get out of jail free card. But my community knows. The community knows I defended myself. My wife, Aminette, where's she at? Where's Aminette at? <coughs> All right, she went to the bathroom. My wife, Mom and Ed, was the one doing the paperwork for me while I was in prison. My wife, because she was studying with me when I was studying. 
And I got off through my secure party status. Hey, if all that was true, why don't you represent yourself? Why don't you get off with your secure party status? That goes to show, man, all that Morse science, Morse law and stuff like that. And, and when, when he saw it get tired of, of all this back and forth bullshit and throw your ass in jail and you trying to look through the book and find, nah. Oh, I'm, I'm sovereign. I, I don't. I don't go by these laws. And and, and no, my I'm, I'm I'm under the secure party. Man, he's so like, man. If you don't get your dumb ass on somewhere, so another lesson within the lesson is that being a perfectionist at Esau's laws that he changes all the time is not going to keep you out of jail if you've committed a uh, uh, a crime against Esau's penal code that warrants you to do some serious time. That's that's not happening. You you might be able to say a few words that maybe get out of a traffic ticket or some stuff like that, but no. Nah, and and I was in I was in jail for murder. I'm calling the cap on that one. I'm calling a super cap with that one. You should be able to, this, hey, more knowledge, more experience. If you could be the murder charge and if it's as serious as you're trying to hype it up to be, this would be, this would be a cakewalk. But nope, your ass is in jail. You understand what I'm saying? Because all of this is about commerce. Right. All of this is about commerce. It's all about commercial transactions. That's what all of this is about. You understand what I'm saying? So you go in there and you say, look, you can't do this to me. I'm a Washita or I'm a Taino. They say, have him checked out. Have his head checked out. They do that a lot to our brothers. You know why? Because they say, look, we trying to get money from you, and you over here telling us who you related to. That ain't got nothing to do with this situation. But you're trying to implement You're trying to invoke nationality. You're trying to invoke your jurisdiction, right? Exactly. That's your jurisdiction. That's what you're trying to do. But the way in which we got to go about it, we got to first make a distinction amongst us and that straw man, the transmitting utility. This is my wife right here. When I was locked down, you heard? This is my wife right here. When I was locked down, she was the one that did the paperwork when everybody was saying, get a lawyer. Mars! It was like, yo, we love you, bro. We feel you. The knowledge is hot and everything, but, um, yo, we just hired you attorney. And I, I'm like, yo, why you did that? She was the only one that stayed firm. She understood that that indictment was a bill of exchange. She understood that information, and she helped me fight that case, and I got out and signed. I got out October 31st. So... Here it is. You bragged about getting out of jail, and now you're taking plea deals. What what happened to uh? No, don't don't sign these agreements. You you you're being forced. That that's, that stuff don't that stuff don't work. So don't sit up here and think you're gonna be able to rape, you know, and then then use your secure party status. That's 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 not about to fly. You know. But now I want to go on to the uh, what what basically old girl said the the mother of the 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 girl he sexually assaulted her uh, what was that I think impact statement or something all right you may unmute ma'am good morning your honor good morning all right so what I'd like you to do um is well you don't want to give your name so at this point just go ahead and you can give us a an impact statement yes ma'am thank you michael nowak this is the first time i have spoken publicly about what you've done to my daughter and i i have gracefully remained silent the last two and a half years two and a half years of pain shock Disbelief, PTSD, constant nightmares, and daily triggers. Trying to help my daughter heal when I'm not even healed myself. What you have done to my daughter, myself, and my entire family is inexcusable. You hurt us all. 
You made me believe that you were such a great man and you could do no wrong. You made me fully trust you and for that my daughter trusted you too. But the truth is, you're a monster, a demon. The very first time that I allowed you to be alone with my daughter, the very first time and you couldn't even help yourself. You told me you was going to be right back. You were going downstairs. You were going to grab food and take vacation pictures. You told me that you wanted to have a one-on-one -on -one talk with her about loving and respecting me as a great mother that I was and am. And I actually believed you. I believed that you were going to bring her right back. I thought you were gonna have this trusting conversation with her that you promised me. Her and I both trusted you. For a grown man to violate a child who trusted him, you should be ashamed of yourself. You plotted on me and my little girl. The entire time you knew what you planned to do. Isolate, intoxicate, then violate my baby. Shame on you. I trusted you to bring her right back. You were supposed to bring her back the same way that you took her. Instead, you drugged her and took advantage of her. And you sexually abused her. You forced alcohol down her throat. You then forced her to see things that no child should ever have to see. You forced her to feel things that no child should have to feel. You forced her to accept violence that no child should ever have to endure. You forced drugs in her that no human should ever even ingest. She's my child. My baby. How could you? How could you? You could have killed her with all the drugs that were found in her system. Another lesson within a lesson. And uh, I just want to point out the fact that the father is not here testifying. Now... I don't know where the father is, could be dead, you know, could be a deadbeat, you know, could be, uh, she could have moved away from him to keep him from the kids. I don't know, but I know all too often is that Jay father are uh, basically not allowed in their children's lives a lot of times. If there's a father in that situation, she's not in that position. A father is not going to allow his daughter to go with another man. That's why it is important to have a man in a household because only a woman is going to do something that fucking stupid towards somebody that she claims that she loves. Father is supposed to protect. And that woman, she failed at, at, at have, keeping a father figure around. So she gave polite, he was supposed to be that father figure. And what did he do? He gave her alcohol and raped her. That's what happened. If you got a father in your life, a father's not about to put his daughter in that position. And you thought your master plan was mapped out perfectly, huh? You thought I'd be dumb enough to believe you over my child. And you thought that money would blind me. You thought I was going to be so blinded that I wouldn't notice when you returned her with bruises all over her body and her mouth busted, uncontrollably shaking. Absolutely not. And although you executed your plan and you got what you wanted those couple of hours, you actually failed. Because look where you're at right now. You have created a lifetime of trauma for my daughter and I. Before you, we never knew evil existed. You brought so much evil into our lives that early morning. And I'll never forget. I called you like 50 times and you wouldn't answer me. And I called her too, but you took her phone. You drugged my baby and you gave her no way to seek help. You left me no way to contact her or even know where she was. And also another thing you ever notice that everybody who was cool with Polite and fell out with him, don't nobody has good things to say about him? 
sometimes you you follow somebody and this person be like, okay, yeah, I fell out with him, but that person still gave me opportunity. You know, I still got respect for him, and and there's certain stuff that's reconcilable. This guy has a horrible track record. This ain't hard to believe. I get physically sick now whenever I'm away from my daughter because of you. Something as simple as her going to school. I'm in panic mode because I'm scared when she comes back, she's going to be hurt all over again. I constantly have flashbacks of that night. And what she lives with is just, it's not okay. She feels uncomfortable around people and will live with this forever. And this is not fair to her. She never deserved this. Shame on you for forcing evil on our youth. And you know, for a year, I questioned, how could you even do this to us? Her and I did nothing wrong to you. We trusted you. I moved across the country because I believed everything that you told me. But it was pure manipulation I see now. All you do is specialize in selling false dreams. How could you do this to an innocent child and mother who simply trusted you? We did nothing wrong. But you know what? I'm done breaking my head trying to question or figure out how you could do such a thing. It's so simple to me now. You're just a sick man. A man who have, you can have a plethora of women, but you secretly prefer to have a child. And it's so clear now. I will never be able to trust another person due to the betrayal that you've shown me and for that i was not willing to trust six strangers and go to trial nor was i going to put my daughter through an additional trauma this plea was in our best interest you and i both know the evidence is extremely substantial but even with that i refuse to have my child be tormented when she's done nothing wrong all she holds is the truth and i will say this Although you were so worried about being labeled a sex offender, you did us a huge favor by admitting to guilt, period. The biggest fault that we have, we be signing things that we don't understand. So they say, yo, uh, is anybody forcing you to do this? And you say no. And you start signing? Hell yeah, you being forced. You want to go to prison? I'm being forced. Who? Who's forcing you? My attorney, my lawyer, my judge. I don't want disagreement. You got to tell the truth. So for that, I thank you. I truly thank you. Yes, mitigation took place and I allowed it as long as it meant you going to prison and you getting true help. Because true help means no more victims. The fact that your only non-negotiable was to accept the sex crime shows exactly the type of man that you are. You know what you did in that hotel room. I know what you did and my daughter knows what you did. DNA doesn't lie. There's no reason why your DNA should have been found on my baby. And yes, I satisfied your bogus request to not be labeled a sex offender, but it doesn't take away from who you truly are. I wasn't going to waste any time going back and forth with you over a label. God will judge you for exactly the person he a sexual predator. So rest assured, jail time equals jail time. And I pray that during your 10 years of sex offender probation, you actually receive the treatment that you need and it helps heal your sick mind and get the thoughts of being with children out of it. All you care about is your pretend image, but I know exactly who you are now. You wanna be this public figure, but you wanna do all your evil acts in secret. You're so self-centered. That's why the last time I saw you on February 27, 2021, you fought me. You try to hold me hostage from taking my daughter to the hospital. I'll never forget that cowardly look in your eyes. I'll never forget it. You were so scared. You were so scared because you realized you messed with the wrong one. Your last words to me, you held me and said, please don't go. You're going to ruin my career. Well, today, September 6, 2023, my last words to you are, I hope the next 17 years of your life, you're reminded of the disgusting, terrifying, unforgettable acts that you've done to my innocent daughter. Shame on you. And although you've caused a tremendous amount of trauma for myself and my daughter, we will and always will always be superior of you 
because a successful, honest career is something that you could never, ever have. We will both continue to stand, stand against violence. My daughter will continue to persevere and be bright and intelligent and courageous young woman that she is. So Michael Nowak, I hope you enjoy prison and God bless you. All right, thank you, ma'am. Um, thank you for your courage for speaking. It, it is heartbreaking in my heart. Hey, that's, that's why, you know, there's a law, you know, cause that little girl, I'm not gonna, you know, doubt that she isn't traumatized. She, she probably is. But this is why she basically, she damaged goods. But this is why the law of rape is that you can't put her away. This woman is damaged good. She is going to go on to live to destroy other young lives. Whoever she births, that child is going to be destroyed. This is Deuteronomy 22 and verse 28, 22 or 28. If a man find a damsel that is a virgin, which is not betrothed, and lay hold on her and lie with her, and they be found. Then the man that lay with her shall give unto the damsel's father fifty shekels of silver, and she shall be his wife. So now, that it says he's supposed to give to the, the damsel's father, not to the damsel's mother. She don't got a father around to give no shekels. He was supposed to be acting as basically a role of like a father figure and he basically took advantage of the situation raped her and tried to give the mother money some shekels of silver to be quiet not to take her as a wife but to shut up and he go about his way because he was trying to deal with the mom and the daughter Mind you, and that's wicked in of itself. Overall, the, the, the nigga is a, a scumbag. He shot up the Bible. Remember, he tried to get the Crips and the Bloods on us. And now, look what has happened to him. Let's see the Crips and the Bloods go save you while you in jail. Hey, Amen. On that note, I want to give all praises and glory to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. All praises for destroying one of our enemies. All praise to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai Bashem Gak Wadash. Double honors to the elders of GMS Rubel. Peace, salutations to the Lekaki on the four corners and highways, byways. Push the truth, sincerity. Peace be unto you and Shalom.